how's everybody doing? All right, so this video is going to be on uh, blasphemy of the Holy Spirit, the only unforgivable sin. Uh, I watched, the reason I'm doing this is because uh, I watched Chris Curtis's video yesterday, and uh, in it, I'm going to link it in the description, you guys should watch it. In it, uh, he used scriptures and he presented a very, uh, he had a very good case with scriptures that uh, God is going to save all people, right? That everybody's going to be saved. And, uh, you know, he, he, he makes a good point. The video was amazing and it really brought me deeper into thought about God's judgment. And it made me question the things that I believe. And, uh, but then as I, I thought more about it over the last night and then this morning, uh, I recognize uh, this is the enemy working. This is the serpent. This is uh, the Antichrist spirit is what it is who wants to invalidate uh, the word of God and uh, wants to deceive and confuse um, God's people. And so we see in, uh, in the scriptures, I think it's in Romans 16, you know, that it says that, uh, you know, by good words and fair speeches, they deserve, deceive the hearts of the simple. And uh, that's why it's so important, man, for us to be in the word of God or to have somebody that we know we can trust leading us. Because where does faith come from? It comes from uh, hearing and reading the word of God. That's Romans 10, 17. And uh, so what's funny about this Chris Curtis guy is that he he has uh, he started out right right off about three, four months ago or whenever he posted his first video, it was about the flat earth, right? Uh, just to grab people's attention. And uh, he wasn't even solid on it as far as he gave the impression that uh, that's where he was coming from. But then come to find out after I watched a few of his videos, he's just he only did that to grab people's attention. And since he started doing that, uh, since he started making videos, it's been all about the Mandela effect now. Uh, they want what what the Mandela effect is. I think essentially trying to do is they're changing the Word of God somehow. Uh, the King James Bible has remained the same for since 1611, since it was published and printed, and that's what we want to study out of. That's the sharp, uh, sharp sword of God's Spirit. When we start changing words around, connections get lost from Scripture to Scripture, and uh, <laughs> you know, we don't get the understanding that God wants us to have in the Spirit. Uh, that the it gets watered down and diluted and even there's a scripture i think it's in peter it says that they would make merchandise of you um you know and that's what we, we see in all these different versions they've they've created it pollutes and corrupts and waters down the word of god and so uh the king james version it's important i believe we can come to, to a knowledge of who the lord is using any bible uh you know any of them i used to, i used the niv when i got um you know when i got delivered and from using cocaine in 2005 and uh, it's because God's word is powerful, but for us to mature and to progress, I believe, into, into uh, you know, to go from the milk, the milk to the meat of the word, the deeper understandings and meanings, we need to be in the King James Bible. That's where it's sharp. But this video is about the blasphemy of the Holy Spirit. And uh, we want to have an understanding of what that is. What is the blasphemy of the Holy Spirit? The blasphemy of the Holy Spirit is talked about in Matthew 12, 22 through 33. And I want you guys to just go ahead and pause this video and go read that now. Okay? So... I guess you guys are back now. And uh, what what do we see here? And and uh, this is the only unforgivable sin. All manner of sin, it says, will be forgiven except for blasting the Holy Spirit. And so we have to look at the context of Matthew 20, uh, 12, 22 through 33. And what do we see? Uh, the religious leaders, the Pharisees, when the Lord had, uh, you know, <clears throat> he cast out the devil. Right? It says, then one was brought unto him, possessed with the devil, blind and dumb, and he healed him. Uh, that he could speak and he had his vision back and they were amazed and, and the religious leaders said that he did that by Beelzebub which is the prince of devils I don't know if this is Satan himself or if he's a subordinate or if it's just another name for Satan I'm not sure but uh, you know what they did this was the only unforgivable sin if you look down further on the Lord goes on he answers them and he says you know all manner of sin will be forgiven but he was addressing what they had just did uh, they said that what he did, he did it by the prince of uh, devils, by Beelzebub. And so the religious leaders were calling the Lord's work. Uh, he, they were saying that the, that was the devil. And the reason that they did this was because they, I believe they, uh, they had partaken of the tree of, of the knowledge of good and evil. And uh, they went to the serpent for enlightenment. And that's what we see with all these different mythologies and vain philosophies. I have a video on that, uh, the summation of esoteric wisdom. It's five or six minutes, but, um, <clears throat> you know, in John 10, we, we read when the Lord came, he was addressing these same people. And he, uh, John 10, one through 14, he says that, uh, you know, uh, 
all that came before me were thieves and robbers. Okay, and then he says, if anybody that enters in through him, he is the door, will go out and find pasture. And so we don't want to cheat and uh, take another way up into heaven. And that's what we see with all the different religions and stuff is that, uh, you know, it's the same thing that to open that faculty within man, which is none else but then to receive a demonic spirit. And that's why it's just from simply studying doctrines of demons, practicing occult practice, ungodly Eastern philosophies and meditation, that's what we see. And, uh, you know, the Lord warned against that. And, and so we want to be careful that we are uh, doing things the proper way, which is by his word. Now, I just want to, I want to play this clip um, and address these things that he's talking about. And I also want you guys to watch this whole video here. But, uh, oops. I want you guys to, to listen to this because I'm going to address what he says here. So this is blaspheming the Holy Spirit. So, again, blaspheming the Holy Spirit is attributing the works of God to the devil, right? Or saying that the devil right, is the Holy Spirit, right, and this is what a lot of people, this this has already been done, the deception's about over with, guys, until the Antichrist takes his full uh, reign and seat of authority on the earth, it's already done, everybody, most people on earth, a lot of people, it says the whole world will worship him, Revelation 13, 8, and uh, we've already seen that, as uh, many people have received another spirit, and they believe that, that uh, that's God, and this is a strong delusion, and uh, if you can't see that, uh, if they can't see that, then that's blaspheming the Holy Spirit, they're uh, beyond uh, being able to come back. It's a strong delusion. That's why it's so important for us not to eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil because it, it, it opens us up to where we no longer have a sense of uh, reality anymore and we can't discern. We can't even use our uh, good judgment uh, to discern what's going on. And so I'm going to play this clip here and I um, just want you guys to listen to this. Because Chris Curtis, he sounds very nice, like a great guy and, and he makes a lot of good points with scriptures, but uh, the Lord said, you read the comments and stuff in, in his video, but the Lord said that, uh, you know, you should be, you shall be hated by all men on account of my name. But if we stand firm to the end, then we shall be saved. So, um, many people are going to be misleading a lot of us, a lot of God's people who don't know the word of God. We want to make sure that we, we have somebody that knows what they're talking about, uh, leading us. If we don't know the word of God, um, you know, and it's, we want to make sure it's Chris Curtis is not the guy to be led by because I'm just just listening to this, guys. Those of you who are saying if you're a homosexual and you don't repent, then God is going to cast you into the lake of fire. Not only are you absolutely wrong, but what you're do doing is you're basically setting yourself up as God on the throne of God. Okay, the Lord said, and uh, it says it in Revelation 3, 21. To him that overcomes, right, our sinful nature, to him that overcomes will I grant to sit with me in my throne, even as I also overcame and sat down with the Father, my Father in his throne. And so the Lord is giving his saints judgment. It says judgment will be given into our hands. That's why we read in 1 Corinthians 6, uh, verses uh, 2, Do you not know that the saints shall judge the world? And if, any wor if the world shall be judged by you, are you unworthy to judge the smallest matters? Know ye not that we shall judge angels? How much more things that pertain to this life? Okay, it goes on. It says uh, in verse 9, Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Neither be deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. Okay? Now, he's totally contradicting what this says right here. And uh, I'm not the one judging. Uh, I'm not judging homosexuals. I've never even uh, been harsh or even spoken against homosexuals because I know the Lord loves them just like he loves loved me all the way through all my filthiness and my sin. Uh, the, 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 the deep lust that I had seated within my soul that was coming from none else but the serpent and these demonic spirits that exploit our lack of awareness and Satan's kingdom is what it is. We have got to divide between soul and spirit and sort it out of our life using the word of God to get free from it. Now, uh, what do you say? That we're judging them. We're setting themselves up on God's throne, but, but we just read in Revelation, right? He would grant that we could sit on his throne. Now, uh, it's not us that's judging Okay, it's not us that's judging, it is God's word, right? In John 12, he says, 
Jesus cried and said on, uh, in verse 44, Jesus cried and said, he that believes on me believes not on me, but on him that sent me, right? And he that seeth me seeth him that sent me. I am come a light into the world that whosoever believeth on me shall not abide in darkness. And if any man hears my words and believes not, I judge him not. For I came not to judge the world, but to save the world. He that rejects me and receives not my words hath one that judges him. The word that I have spoken, the same shall judge him in the last day. So I'm not making a judgment on anybody. It's God's word that makes the judgment. And that's why we want to, uh, to understand and to, to know his word. That's why the scripture says in John uh, 7, it says, Judge not according to appearance, but judge with righteous judgment. So to say that, that uh, you know, it's not me judging, it's God's word, okay? There is a judgment on the wicked, okay, on those that refuse to come out of their sin, on those that have been serving Satan in his kingdom, and it's righteous and it's holy. Uh, God's fire, okay, is in Zion. His furnace is in Jerusalem, and soon everybody's going to understand the meaning of that, okay? So Psalm 1, it tells us, Know ye not, I'm sorry, it says, uh, the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. None of us are righteous of, of and of, in and of ourselves. It's only by faith that we are able to overcome. Okay, the right, the just shall live by his faith. If you guys see my studies, you'll see that. But uh, I want you guys to go look at the go look at the video I put together, the the sword of the Lord's righteous judgment. And uh, just listen to it. It's like 30 minutes, but it makes it all very clear. There is a judgment on the ungodly and on the wicked, and it's righteous and it's holy. And uh, it's not me that's doing it. It's the Word of God. Okay, it's not it's not God's saints that are doing that. You know, it's not like we're in error. Okay, God's Word is sh living, sharp, and active. It's the sword of the Lord's righteous judgment. Go watch that. Okay. Uh, you know, but Chris, I just want to say to you. If, if, if we're not to judge, why does the scripture say, uh, what is it, in Matthew 12, the men of Nineveh, sh Nineveh shall rise in judgment with this generation, shall condemn it, because they repented at the preaching of Jonah, and behold, a greater than Jonah is here. The queen of the south shall rise up in judgment with this generation, and shall condemn it. For she came from the uttermost parts of the earth to hear the wisdom of Solomon, and behold, a greater than Solomon is here. Okay, so the Queen of the South, what, if, are we not really supposed to judge, Chris? I think you're lying, and what you're doing is you're turning things uh, upside down. Scripture says, whoa, okay, whoa, 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 okay, unto them that are wise. I'm sorry, Isaiah 5, 20, woe unto them that call evil good and good evil, that put darkness for light and light for darkness, that put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. Woe unto them that are wise in their own eyes and prudent in their own sight. Woe unto them that are mighty to drink wine and men of strength to mingle strong drink, which justify the wicked for reward and take away the righteousness of the righteousness from him. Therefore, as the fire devours the stubble and the flame consumes the chaff, so their root shall be as rottenness and their blossomness shall go up as dust because they have cast away the law of the Lord of hosts and despise the word of the Holy One of Israel. And that's what you're doing, Chris, is you're despising God's word when you tell us that all men, you made a very good case with scriptures, but, but is the sum of his word is truth, right? Every one of his righteous judgments is true and endures forever. That's Psalm 119, 160. Okay, so, uh, you know, it's obvious that, Chris, to me, after spending, thinking the last, uh, the last, this morning, last night, this morning, thinking about uh, the video you put together, it's obvious to, who you're, to me who you're serving. And, uh, you know, we want to be careful, guys. I make this video, uh, but I'm going to just go ahead and let this finish. So you guys can listen to the rest of this, and I would, I'm going to link it in the description. But, uh, you know, go listen to this, because this is how subtle the serpent is. He will use the Word of God uh, and make us believe a lie, right? So uh, I love you guys. God bless you. Do not allow the serpent to mislead you. The Antichrist is a liar and a deceiver, and he's all over the place. But these people in the presence of the Spirit, the Word, the light, the truth of God, have no power, no authority. And you shall tread upon serpents and scorpions, and nothing shall by any means harm you, right? And every tongue that arises against you in judgment, you shall condemn. This is the heritage of a servant of the Lord, and their righteousness is of me, okay? That's Isaiah 54, 17. So God bless you guys. I'm going to finish this up. And uh, comment. Let me know what you think. If... Uh, if there's anything that, that you think that I said wrong, I want to understand and know. So, you know, Chris, you should be ashamed, right? The earth is flat. We see it. You, you started out with, with your, uh, your videos about that, and then you completely went off on, on just in, in 
a deceptive manner, okay? The Word of God, we can still study it. You guys, they want to invalidate it by changing it with the Mandela effect. However that's happening, we can. God's Word is still sharp, living, and active, and it's powerful. So I love you guys. God bless. <clears throat> Thank you. 